What is up guys? Agent Kak is here and today we are going to be going over a bunch of tips and information for how to increase your damage output in the Division 2. If you are sick of it taking three magazines to take down an enemy, if you hate that every enemy is a bullet sponge, I've got some bad news, enemies are always going to be bullet sponges in the division, but that aside, hopefully we can get it down to two magazines to take down an enemy. And so, let's get started. But just before we do, guys, if you're looking for some new headphones, I've partnered with Astro, so check the link in the description down below. Clicking it is going to automatically apply a code, letting you save some money and help the channel out. Definition of a win-win, and the Division 2's audio sounds great with those headphones. Now. First things first, let's start with the absolute elephant in the room. This is the biggest tip I have. If you're not doing this, you are missing out on so much damage. All you need to do to do considerably more damage in the Division 2 is put on an assault rifle that uses 5.56 five, rounds. And, you know, you may be wondering, why do they do some sort of secret extra damage or something like that? No. It's just because of one attachment, this light extended 556 magazine. This attachment is so powerful, it is going to warp the meta from when you start the game at level 1 to when the raid comes out. And frankly, this is such a big deal, I hope the developers get on top of this and actually introduce some alternatives because there's no reason to use SMGs, there's no reason to use any other gun type almost as your primary than an assault rifle with 556. Now why is that? Well. When we're looking at the division, you want sustained damage output. Yes, putting on this magazine, because it lowers your rate of fire, will actually lower your DPS in those first few seconds. But because it has 30 extra rounds, it makes all assault rifles in 5.56, and they, almost all of them, in fact, all of them really, come with 30 rounds in a magazine, so it gives them all 60. A 100% magazine size increase and again when we're looking at the division 2 and you are battling those purple enemies those gold enemies you do not want to reload mid gunfight anytime you do that tanks your damage output so being able to kill two enemies with a single magazine being able to kill one gold enemy with a single magazine that is so important and it will help you near immeasurably in most gunfights. So if you don't have this attachment, make it a priority. It's rewarded for doing the Department of Justice side mission. And if you do, definitely as your primary weapon, run an assault rifle with 5.56 with this magazine. Now, for your other weapon, because of ammo considerations, it's fine to run an LMG, sniper, rifle, SMG, any of those things. But your main weapon should always be that combo. Even if it ne doesn't necessarily do as much damage. You may have an SMG that does, you know, a hundred, a thousand damage more even in some circumstances and have the same rate of fire, but if it's rocking a 25, 30 round magazine and you're capable of 60 with an assault rifle, you just have to go with the 60. And this actually also makes LMGs, certain LMGs like the M60, very, very good because they natively come with 100 rounds in the magazine. They are fantastic for sustained fire. Now, I should note that there are other extended mags for other ammo types than 5.56. In fact, there's a 7.62 mag that also has a 30 round increase, but it's available randomly once you get a control point at the absolute end game to its max tier and then it can randomly drop blueprints. So people have gotten to world tier 4 without having access to that 7.62 mag and for the SMGs you're only talking about a 10 bullet increase, a 12 bullet increase to the mag. So the 5.56 one is available early and it's so clearly the best one. Alright, now moving on from there, the next tip I have is that damage and rate of fire are not always the keys to success when it comes to damage output. Most people are just going to do that calculation. Well, this has a lot of damage and it has a high rate of fire. I'm going to put that on because of course it's going to do more DPS. And while that is technically correct, it's technically correct at point blank ranges in a very controlled environment. Most circumstances in the Division 2 have you fighting actually at pretty longer ranges. 
This is something that's also kind of key to this game. If you're coming from the Division 1, just the design of New York in general compared to Washington, D.C., Washington, D.C. is a lot more open. You find yourself fighting down alleyways and close quarters a lot less. There's a lot more outside engagements. And so being able to be lethal at longer ranges is very important. So, if we take a weapon like this FAMAS assault rifle with an extremely high rate of fire of 900 rounds per minute, excellent DPS, and shoot it with no attachments, it kicks up violently. Then, if we switch to this ACR with a much slower rate of fire and potentially not as much damage output, it definitely kicks up, but it's not as violent and it's much easier to control overall and throw on a few attachments and you are really lethal at very long ranges. And that's the thing, sometimes it is worth putting on the weapon that does maybe a little bit less damage and that shoots a little bit slower to have that increase to accuracy. Especially because when we're talking about attachments, you don't have to throw on all those attachments to improve those things. If you're using something like that F2000, like a FAMAS, something that has an incredibly high rate of fire, you're likely going to have to put attachments on to calm it down. Increases to stability, increases to accuracy. But if you're using an already natively stable and accurate gun, you can mess around with the attachments more to increase things like critical hit damage, critical hit chance, or one of my favorites, a barrel stabilizer that actually increases damage to elites by 10%, elites being like gold enemies, and lower stability by 15%. If I was to put that on the F2000, it would be absolutely wild. All over the place and my damage output wouldn't be as good. But putting it on an MK16 is very reasonable and that is gonna increase your overall damage output. Now, while we're talking about attachments, another big tip is that know what attachments go well with certain gun types. Putting on, for example, a laser sight that increases critical hit chance by 10% on an assault rifle is all but useless. Putting it on an SMG is extremely good and will increase your damage output. Now why is that? Well assault rifles don't actually natively do a lot of critical hits, but SMGs do and rifles do as well. That's why, like I said, that compensator that just increases damage to elites is so good on assault rifles, whereas stuff that increases critical hit chance and damage, those are much better on SMGs and rifles. All right, now staying on the subject of weapons, what kind of weapon talents should you be looking for for increased damage output? Well, there are a bunch of good ones and let's go over some of the best. Firstly, Ranger. Every five meters you are from the target grants plus 2% weapon damage. Of course, this is best on rifles, sniper rifles, but actually really good on assault rifles as well. Most gunfights take place, you know, 20 meters apart. That is a free 8 to 10% damage increase you're just getting for that weapon. Now this perk is also great because it requires four or less in your skill value of your build. And that's good because if you're going for damage output, you don't wanna have massive skill value. If you have massive skill value, you're likely creating a build that's more about obviously utilizing your skills than necessarily getting raw damage output with your weapons. So this is gonna allow you to absolutely stack out on your red symbol aka your damage output symbol and still have this perk active something like this perk reformation that requires four or less of this red skill isn't great for a damage output build but not every skill will have these requirements some just automatically are granted to the weapon and some of the best you're looking for include allegro plus 10 percent rate of fire just a straight damage output increase and it's going to counteract on assault rifles the magazine which is very important also another great one is extra plus 20 percent magazine capacity we've talked about how important having a large magazine is this is absolutely fantastic. On an assault rifle, you're gonna get with the magazine combination like 74 rounds. In fact, I have a UMP45 here, and even though normally this would not be a very good gun because it does come with extra, and I have the magazine with 12X rounds, I got it up to 50 rounds in a magazine. So that's actually competing, that's in the same category as those assault rifles now. So that's another really important perk to look for. 
Another great perk is Bread Basket. Essentially, Head Seeker from Destiny landing body shots adds a stack of plus 5% headshot damage. So that's just going to overall increase your output as long as you're mixing body shots and headshots together, which is pretty much every gunfight. And it requires 5 or more of the red symbol, which is great. You can have as much damage output coming from your armor as possible and still have this perk active. Now some perks that can be good to look for is something like Ignited, deal plus 20% weapon damage, fantastic, to burning enemies. If you have skills or equipment that light enemies on fire, this can be the absolute god tier perk you're looking for. Next up, Close and Personal. Killing a target within 7 meters grants plus 50% weapon damage for 5 seconds. An absurd bonus if you can activate it, you have to play aggressively, but it is worth it. And this is where my spiel about magazines comes into play. If you have to reload after getting that close range kill, you waste this bonus. If you can use half your magazine to kill this enemy, and then the other half is dealing plus 50% damage, that is the key here. Another pretty decent one for SMGs and rifles is Killer. Killing an enemy with a critical hit grants plus 50% critical hit chance for 5 seconds. Honestly, although it might not seem like it, Accurate is pretty good too, plus 15% accuracy just to let you hit your shots more often and therefore increase your damage output. Now another really good perk that you should like prioritize is Lucky Shot. Magazine capacity is increased by 20%, absurdly powerful. Missed shots from cover have a 25% chance to return to the magazine. Such a good perk. And actually, my role here for this rifle came with extra as well for another plus 20% magazine capacity. That is a, a god roll if I've ever seen it. Unfortunately, it happened to spawn in a lower gear score item. Now moving on from there, somewhat counterintuitively, messing around with your weapons isn't the only way to increase your damage output. Sometimes your armor is key to doing more damage, and a lot of people are just going to be looking for, oh, I'm not doing enough damage, I need a new weapon, I need a new weapon. Actually, your new pair of gloves or mask or whatever could substantially increase your damage output, and here's how. There's a bunch of different bonuses armor comes with, and a lot of them affect weapons. If we look here, I have this chest on right now, and that increases LMG damage because of the set bonus, and also, in terms of attributes, increases headshot damage and critical hit damage. So a lot of things affecting weapons right there. But, if I'm using an, an assault rifle, which I am right now, I'm not actually getting the most in terms of my damage output. In fact, if I get a shot on this target, just one shot with this assault rifle, I do around 15,000 damage. Now, if I switch to just another chess piece, actually a lower gear score chess piece, but one with much more relevant attributes, I get now, for the set bonus, plus 10% assault rifle damage. So already a big boon. Before, I have an LMG bonus. If I'm not utilizing LMGs, that's a wasted bonus. This one is going to give me a much more practical one for the gun at hand, and it gives me a 7.5% straight weapon damage increase, and it has perks that are relevant, but we'll talk about that later. If I use this chest piece, I actually do around 17,000 damage. So just by switching chess pieces to, again, a lower gear score, actually worse quality chess piece, but one with much more relevant skills, increase my damage output. So this is something you absolutely need to be aware of. Utilizing the right armor with the right benefits is going to substantially increase your damage output. But what benefits are you looking for? Well, first and foremost, you want straight damage increases. So stuff like Weapon damage increases, that's probably one of the best. It's a very versatile bonus, so no matter what weapons you're using, they're being affected. But also in this category, we have like SMG damage bonuses, assault rifle damage bonuses, LMG damage bonuses. Of course, that only applies if you're actually utilizing that gun type. But if you are, it's as good as a straight damage bonus. Next up, something like headshot damage really applies to most weapons out there is extremely relevant and then kind of at the bottom of the list we have critical hit damage and critical hit chance again those are only going to apply to mostly rifles and smgs and they don't apply all the time a weapon damage increase is going to improve an smg and it's going to improve its critical hit damage as well whereas a critical hit damage bonus is, is obviously just going to apply to if you hit a critical hit with 
a weapon like an SMG that can actually make the most of it. But of course, that tier list applies to similar numerical bonuses. A 15% headshot increase is much better than a 3% weapon damage increase, for example. However, something important to know is that if you get a piece of armor that does not come with any weapon damage increases, perhaps you're using it because it comes with armor on kill, which is extremely good for survivability, you can still get that piece of armor to increase your damage output. Now, how? Well, firstly, the recalibration station. You can go there and change attributes of your armor and your weapons, actually, but that's kind of its own thing. Something else you can do is just put on mods. Seriously, remember to mod your armor. Even in defensive system mod slots, I have this one here that just gives a 4% increase to shotgun damage. These are things that you're gonna get and sometimes you're gonna forget about, so make sure to check them out, but in the offensive mod slot is what you're really looking for. Here you can get, I mean, look at this, increase to weapon damage by 1.5%, a 4% increase to rifle damage and a 2% increase to LMG damage just for putting a mod on a piece of armor. So not only are you looking for that right armor, you're looking for armor that can accommodate those good offensive mods to get damage on top of damage on top of damage. And so guys, those are all of my tips for how to increase your damage output in The Division 2. I hope you enjoyed this video, found it informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Division 2 content, be sure to slap that subscribe button. If you guys want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at RickKakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.